All right, so we finally got a single carb intake here, and this is one that was designed by Adam Smith that actually runs pretty good and doesn't lean out the front cylinder too bad. So I can actually set up and run this little single carb intake on my test rig here. But one thing that is really bugging me is how come, even for this one, the front cylinder tends to be leaner than the rear. Now I tried, like for example this one, this was one I had, and it's really unequal on the runners, and it did okay, but it was still leaning out, especially when I throttled up. Now the good thing about this one is that when I throttle up, it actually goes rich. So that's good, it's just lean at idle, it richens on up, and so you could run this one. This one here leaned out when you throttled up. Then we had the one that I made with uh, equal runners, and it didn't work at all. It actually had the front cylinder so lean that you couldn't do anything. I couldn't even test this one, but at least this one here gets it close enough, and I'll set the camera down and fire it up and show you what's going on, but I'm thinking that maybe it's got something to do with the uneven firing of the cylinders, and so I'm wondering just what effect does that unequal fire on these Virago motors have to do with this front cylinder always wanting to be lean on a single carb. So we're gonna get set up here and I'm gonna actually change the timing on one of the cylinders. I'm gonna move it 180 degrees out because what I wanna do is see if I can make the front cylinder lead and then it'll change it so that it runs richer. The rear cylinder is the following cylinder once I set up the time. So we'll get set up, we'll show how to do that, then we'll test it. But for starters, I'll show how it's running right now with the standard way you do the timing and with this single carb intake. All right, so we're all set up just like normal. We got the rear cylinder leading in the timing, which is the way we normally set it up. Then it makes a short rotation on the flywheel and then the front cylinder fires. So I'll show right here that this front cylinder is running leaner. Now this is good enough I could tune it in. I hadn't tuned the carburetor yet, just got it running. But it's close enough that you could get it running. I can tune it on in, but I want to see, while it's in balance like this, what happens if I swap this timing around. So we'll fire it up, and you can see, once these come on, All right, so you can see that that front cylinder was a little bit leaner than the rear. Now, like I say, I gotta adjust the carburetor. I'm a little bit rich when I throttle up right now, but that's a good thing because the other single carb intakes were actually leaning out when I throttled up. So this one's doing a whole lot better. I can adjust for that. We might run a little bit lean at idle, but then when you throttle up, you're running down the road, you'll be fine. But it's still weird that that front cylinder wants to go lean. So I'm gonna set up, and I'll show it over here on the other side, how we're gonna adjust this timing so that maybe we can make the front cylinder lead, and it's gonna change that setup on the front being too lean. All right, so to test this theory on if the sequence of the firing of this motor impacts that front cylinder being lean all the time on these single carb intakes, I'm gonna reset the timing. So, if you're not familiar with the timing, what you do, you can look down inside your little sight glass there, and you can see I got it set where the arrow is pointing to the T. Now that is the top dead center of the cylinder number one, which is the rear cylinder back here. So if we look at it, when I'm sitting on T, I should be pointing upwards right here. I put a dot on it, so that ought to point up to this little arrow. It might be 180 out. You would have to rotate your crank around another full rotation and you'll get it up to the top. But we're sitting on top dead center and we're on our top dead center mark down here. Now, this cylinder fires first and the reason why I say that is I'll walk around the other side and I'll show you where the top dead center mark is for the front cylinder. All right, so over to the front cylinder here and I put little marks on it so you can see it a little better. A little hard to get to on my rig here. But if you can see right here in the video, Right down here is a little white mark. Well, that's 
the top dead center on the cam for the front. But because the way this thing fires, it actually is past 180. That would be down here because it's got to get all the way up to the top to that mark right there. So it's already partially there, which means there's not 180 degrees on rotation before the front cylinder fires, which means the rear cylinder is leading. So what I'm going to do is leave this one alone because it's a little hard to get to, but I'm going to go to the back cylinder back there and I'm going to rotate it around because these motors have what's called a wasted spark ignition. So it actually sparks each time the flywheel rotates. So I can set that rear cam 180 out and it'll still be on top dead center because the piston doesn't care. Then it's going to fire because it's a wasted spark ignition. And what that'll do is have the front cylinder leading the rear cylinder with that type setup. So let's go back over here to our little window and we'll see what we're talking about. All right, so to set the time in the normal way, which is the way it is right now, normally when you set your timing, you find your little T, which is what I got right here. You match it up to the rear and then you set that. So then you got it on T for top dead center on the piston and your top dead center on your cam. Then to do the front cylinder, what you would do is you rotate it around and you rotate it until you get to just the line. Now when I rotate it around, I'll eventually hit the line, which is not 180 degrees. Right there. So you can see now I got the line in the window. The line is when the cam on the front is up on top dead center. So now we can see we got the line in the window. So over on the front cam over here, if my timing is set right, now inside of here, if I zoom in there, you can see my little dot that's on my gear right there, lines up to that dot up there. So that's how you normally time one where you start with the rear and then you just rotate around. You don't go past the line and then you set the front. Well, what I'm gonna do is actually change that so that it's gonna meet the line on the front cylinder first and then it'll come to the line on the back. Then we're gonna see if that makes any difference on this air fuel ratio on this front cylinder. So let's get set up over here. All we gotta do is take the rear gear loose, rotate it around, and then we're gonna put it back to where it's 180 out. All right, so in order to do this, I gotta get that little dot back up top. Then I'm gonna loosen this up, rotate the motor, but not rotate the cam, put the gear back in, and then we're gonna be 180 out on our rotation and our front cylinder is going to leave. So let's crank it on back around. Right there. So now we're back on our T. We got it up top and our cam is on top. So now all we got to do is take this guy loose. And if we move it any, we'll have to set it back. And there we go. So now we got our gear exposed and what we can do is we'll save our little cover here and our bolt. So now what I want to do is actually take the gear off so it doesn't rotate the crank and then I'm going to rotate this thing around then I'm going to move the gear back and put it back in position. All right. So in order to get the gear off of here, it won't really pull off because it's under tension on the chain. I got to actually take the little tensioner loose. So we got to get his little cover off. And now we got access to where we can put a flathead in here and we can loosen up the tensioner. So now when I turn it back, see the tensioner loosens up and I can take this gear off if I'm careful. And I should be able to pop that gear right up there. So what we're going to do now is hold this up where it's not rotating the cam. We're going to rotate the motor 360 degrees till we get back to the T. What that's going to do is put the firing of the rear cylinder behind the firing of the front. And now we're just going to get our wrench and we're going to rotate this thing around. And what we'll do, it'll be 360 down here. It's only going to be 180 up here. So that little dot's going to go to the bottom. All right, so now we're back to the T down on the bottom down here. So what I'm gonna do is take this gear off 
and I'm going to rotate the gear around on the chain. So now we're going to put our gear 180 degrees out. So now when we put it back up in there, we've got to get our teeth lined up right. So I've got to walk the gear just a little bit. So now all we got to do is set it back up on our marker. So that's where we got to loosen this thing back up so we can get it back up on the shaft. All right, so with our gear back installed and I made sure I'm back on my pin, so it's all the way to the back. Uh, there's an issue with this motor right here, this uh, chain guide right here. Tensioner guide must be broken down in the bottom because it's not supposed to slide around, but it runs up to the top, so it'll be okay for our little trials here. So now all we got to do is put our little cover and our bolt back in and we're pretty close sitting on a half a tooth there. So let's get it all tightened back up and then we'll be ready to rotate it around and see just what's going on. All right so with that adjustment as you can see I got my T in my window and then my rear is timed up here so you can see that it lines up to the mark more or less because this chain guide right here is loose but now when we go around to the other side you can see right there my dot that's on the gear right down there it used to be on this side now it's over here so what's going to happen is this one it sparks and fires when that's up here it's already advanced past it so this one's going to fire right up here and then immediately it's going to make just a little rotation and that rear cylinder is going to fire. So it's going to change how the cylinders fire. They're not going to be as even. They might be firing much closer together, but we're going to see if that makes a difference on this air fuel ratio mix here for this motor. So let's get set up here, put our covers back on, then we're going to fire it up and we're going to see if that makes a difference on how the motor sounds and also how it does on its air fuel ratio with this single carb intake. All right, so with the front cylinder now leaving the rear cylinder because I adjusted this one to where the front cylinder fires first, then it rotates a little bit, then the rear cylinder fires. No other changes to anything. Now let's fire it up and let's see if that swaps that front and rear air fuel ratio to where the rear now goes lean and the front goes richer. That's going to tell us that every bit of this issue about this unequal air fuel ratio is related to how the cylinders fire. So here we go. Sure enough, <clears throat> just by swapping how the timing between the two cylinders is, you can see the rear started going leaner and the front was a little bit richer. So well within range there, even better than before when I had the timing like it's normally set. I can actually adjust that because it's running a little bit rich, but they're very close together. And when you throttle up, it still throttles up good. So there we go. We figured it out. Maybe that's why. Some folks struggle with these single carb intakes and other folks don't have any problems with them. So I'll actually leave it like that. Go ahead and tune this carburetor and see if I can't make this uh, test rig run with this single carb intake. Well, there we go. Well, alrighty. Well, thanks for watching.